One of the civil society leaders, Moses Mkandawire, says Malawi has registered a lot of progress since President Dr. Joyce Banda assumed power on the 7th of April 2012. Mkandawire cites governance, economic and political progress that Malawi is making as a sure sign of positive movement. He made these observations during an exclusive interview with MBC in Mzuzu. This is almost uh, a year uh, since uh, Her Excellency uh, uh, Dr. Joyce Banda came into uh, power after the demise of our former president, Professor Bingo Mtariga. I would, I would say that um, there have been a number of um, uh, positive developments that have taken place si since then, but there have also been some challenges uh, here and there in terms of the administration, uh, but also the management of the of the state. On the positive development, I would say that um, I think Malawians would agree with me that y you remember um, uh, under the leadership of Professor uh, Bingo Amtariga, we had uh, lots of challenges uh, on the aspect of politics, but also uh, economically. In the political arena, as you know, I mean, there were a lot of uh, human rights you know, violations that were taking place in the country, and they were escalating day in, day out. And as you remember, that uh, at, at that time, uh, we had a number of diplomatic scandals, uh, particularly with our colleagues in uh, Mozambique, uh, Patri, you know, uh, Tanzania, but also uh, Zambia, and including Britain. And I think for us as a nation, uh, that wasn't a good uh, development, uh, considering that uh, uh, we are a landlocked country, and there's no way where we could uh, definitely enter into uh, some kind of, you know, uh, antagonistic, you know, uh, environment or approach with our colleagues, particularly the neighbors. And more so, uh, considering that we are also a poor country, and uh, as we all know, we were uh, colonized by Britain, and I think Britain does provide a lot of support, uh, technically and financially, to, uh, to Malawi. And for us to reach the level of actually uh, chasing, you know, the British High Commissioner at, at that time, I think that wasn't really a welcome development. Uh, in the economic arena, I think we all know uh, we don't have to, you know, uh, to go back into explaining in details in terms of what happened. But I think uh, in the final, I mean, in, in, in summary, I would say uh, the economy was really a torpedo. Um, to be in the sense that I think we had very uh, few, you know, folex. Uh, we couldn't, particularly our colleagues in the business sector, I mean, they were really suffocated. Uh, even us, uh, the ordinary Malawians, you know, we are really suffocated in the sense that, I mean, we could not even, you know, manage to buy fuel from outside. And I think you remember that um, uh, a lot of people were actually sleeping at, at filling stations. Uh, most taking three days, you know, at filling stations looking for fuel and here and there. And that fuel that was found on black market, uh, particularly for those that were managing to buy from Tanzania or Zambia, uh, that fuel uh, became quite, quite expensive, you know, for the ordinary Malawians. And the end result of that was that even the products, you know, and the services out there uh, became quite, quite expensive. Uh, I think in the short analysis, I would say we almost reached, you know, uh, some kind of a, of a failed state uh, as Malawi. So if we take from there and then compare with what is happening currently um, uh, after uh, Dr. Joyce Panda, you know, came into office, I would largely, you know, say that um, um, as a country we're far much better off, far much better off in the sense that we have um, uh, restored our uh, diplomatic relationships with uh, uh, the countries that I've alluded to, like, you know, Mozam Mozambique. Um, and I'm quite happy that just some few days ago, uh, Amando Gebuza was here uh, for a three days visit. And I think this for us is quite encouraging because we can't do without Mozambique. Uh, you know, most of our goods actually come through the ports of uh, Mozambique, particularly Beila. Um, uh, we have, you know, uh, also uh, not forgetting uh, Zambia, um, Michael Sata, I mean, has assisted us quite a lot, uh, recently under the current, you know, administration, uh, Tanzania likewise. Uh, but I think the most important thing is the, 
uh, installation of that you know diplomatic relationship with the, uh, Great Britain um, and I think for for me uh, that's quite quite encouraging and I do believe the majority of Malawians would ag also uh, agree with me on that um, in addition to that I would say that um, um, that I think the president has really made you know critical decisions for the country uh, in, in, in one year she has, she has been in office uh, particularly on the uh, political front, um, uh, there have been a number of political reforms, you know, like reversing those, you know, uh, uh, pieces of legislation that were uh, put in place under the leadership of Professor uh, Bingo Amtalika. And some of those, you know, pieces of legislation were uh, against uh, the international, you know, human rights instruments and other, you know, pieces of legislation at international level, but also our own, you know. Uh, national uh, 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 the, the national legislation and, and 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 I think we we also know that the majority of Malawians were not happy with some of those amendments uh, particularly you know uh, the law to do with the the media um, and then the law that actually empowered you know in uh, the, the, the president to decide as to when elections you know are going to be held, particularly the local government elections, you know, um, the law basically that deals with the, the national flag, the way it was, you know, the manner in which it was, you know, uh, amended. Uh, really, I mean, these are things that I think Malawians were saying, hey, uh, what sort of democracy is this? I don't think that's the democracy that uh, uh, we uh, voted into in 19, 1994. Uh, particularly in 1993 when we were, we were uh, actually participated in the referendum because at that time you know Malawians were actually asked as to whether we wanted to continue with the one party system of governance or the multi party system and I think for us we decided that we should take the path of multi party system of governance and I think it was also very very you know uh, difficult for us because uh, the the past administration was almost taking us, you know, uh, to more or less like a one-party system, you know, of governance in the way they were conducting themselves. Particularly, you know, when you looked at the executive organs that 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 was there. So, uh, in a nutshell, I would say, I would say, I think it's uh, we are we are far much better off now. And I'm and I'm just asking myself, uh, had it been that we still had. Um, uh, Professor Mtarika, where would we have been uh, by now? Uh, I think I leave it to Malawians basically to decide. Uh, but this does not mean that uh, there are no complaints or challenges. I mean, uh, uh, since Madame uh, came into uh, into office, there are those kind of challenges we hear uh, from you know people complaining, you know people asking us as members of civil society to be commenting and advising the current administration, you know. The things to do with, uh, uh, um, for instance, I think people are complaining about um, the ever escal the escalating, you know, commodity prices as a result of the fluctuation of our culture um, with regard to uh, the dollar. Uh, you know, there was devaluation uh, that actually took place last year, where we were actually told that uh, uh, now a, a dollar would fetch around 250. Uh, and, and, and in the process, what you discover today is that it is no longer there. It's almost uh, trading around uh, 400, 400 something, you know, a quacha uh, to, uh, to a dollar. Um, so there's, there's also a perception that uh, perhaps uh, the administration of Madame uh, is not really looking at the interest of the majority of Malawians, uh, particularly when it comes to managing, you know, the economy. But I don't want to over defend uh, the current administration and I think I look at this as a broader uh, kind of you know challenge challenge in the sense that if you're looking at the way the economy is uh, really being you know uh, looked at let's look at the global level first because at a global level you discover that there is um, um, there's a global crisis America has gone through this kind of crisis uh, Britain and you know Greece you know you know Spain you know Portugal and so many you know, kind, kind of countries that have gone through these kind of challenges. So for me, I'm asking, say, look, if, if Britain, you know, uh, America, you know, 
can suffer the way they've suffered in terms, you know, where they reach the level of actually, in, you know, retrenching many people. Uh, but also countries like America reached a point where they had to inject in, you know, money into the economy, like what they call a uh, stimulus package. You remember the statement from Obama? And I'm, and I'm if, if these countries can find themselves, you know, uh, in this kind of situation, <laughs> what about Malawi? What sort of economy do we have? You know, c can we just let these countries you know, suffer and then Malawi not suffer? I don't think so. Uh, of course, I'm not an economist. I mean, economists would explain these things far much better off. But I think, from the general knowledge, uh, I would argue that um, that 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 I think the challenges that went through economically as a country, you know, uh, largely to do with the global environment. So, what is your general advice? Okay, um, what what I would say, Lily, um, looking at all these challenges, um, it, it's 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 not easy. It's not easy to say, look, maybe this is the path that we can take. One is that I would want to appreciate and I would want to encourage the current administration to continue with the austerity measures that they put in place. Um, maybe the only challenge is that you see the political leadership should, should be the face, basically, you know, to apply the principles of you know, austerity measures. Because if they are not, then that becomes much of a challenge um, uh, amongst the majority of Malawians, and they will be questioning. Uh, secondly, I think I would also want to see to it that uh, as Malawians, I think let us agree that we're in these kind of challenges, and I think together let's create a space where we can constructively you know, engage each other, debate, and find you know, alternative ways on how best you know, we can uh, um, uh, manage to sell through these uh, difficult challenges. Because what I would say is that this is not the first time that uh, we, um, uh, I mean, Malawi is not the first country basically to experience this, as I've already said. And I don't think that Malawi will be the last country basically to also experience this. I mean, there will be countries that will experience this. But I think for us, is we should be asking ourselves now how best then can we sail through these difficult times but one critical issue is about how then do we diversify our economy so that we don't just depend on agriculture and i think agriculture we've seen how it has negatively impacted on us you know um yeah uh, of course i'm happy that nowadays there are issues to do with mining um i think let us put our uh, you know our heads together and focus on how best we can then generate resources from the mining sector, from the tourism sector, you know, um, um, as we have been doing, you know, uh, on the agriculture, on the agriculture sector. But <clears throat> the other issue really is also for the political leadership to be able to listen to some cries, you know, from uh, from Malawians, because you see there have been situations where Malawians have said, "Look, please, can you, you know, uh, look at that issue, look at this issue." But there have been statements uh, from uh, the political leadership to say, look, we will not stop. You know, so when you make such kind of statements, it's like, uh, it, it's, it, it's like you don't care, you know. So I, I think I would advise uh, the political leadership basically to be very, very careful in the way they uh, utter some of the statements. Uh, because really this problem is not theirs. It is for all of us. And, and, and I think it is important that maybe the political leadership should be able to be explaining to people about some of these events, you know, some of these processes, because lack of it, uh, to some extent, has also largely contributed to uh, creating perceptions, you know, um, out there. So these are some of the uh, proposals that I, I, would, I would put forward. <laughs>